A database is typically designed so that it is easy to store data and access information. A good database is crucial to any company or organization. This is because the database stores all the pertinent details about the company, such as employee records, transactional records, salary details, etc. Today, I, Bhavita, on behalf of Edureka, bring you to understand one of the most important databases used today in the market, which is MongoDB. So before we understand what exactly is MongoDB, let's go ahead and look into the agenda for today. In today's agenda, we're going to have a brief introduction on what is database. With that, we'll understand what exactly is MongoDB and why use MongoDB and look at some of the features of MongoDB. Along with that, we'll look at the application and then close the session by seeing which are the companies which use MongoDB as their database. So let's get started. But before we go ahead, make sure you subscribe to Edureka YouTube channel and hit the notification bell to never miss an update. Also, if you're interested in online training certification, do check out the link given in the description box below. So let's get started. We'll have a quick introduction on databases. Now putting into definition, Databases are basically a collection of organized information that can easily be accessed, managed, or even updated. Now, database systems are very important to your business, as I've mentioned earlier, because they can communicate information related to your sales transaction, product inventory, customer profiles, or even market activities. Database is usually managed by a system which is known as database management system. Now, there are several advantages of using database, like it reduces data redundancy, it reduces updating errors and increased consistency. There is a great amount of data integrity and independence from applications programs. There is improved data access to users through use of host and query languages. Together, the data and the DBMS, along with applications that are associated with them, are referred to as database systems often shortened as database. Now let's understand some of the advantages of using database. As I've mentioned earlier, it is extremely easy to update data and maintain data. The next thing is data security. Now there is high security management for each of the data or databases that is used here. Now database security refers to a range of tools that controls and measures a design which is designed to establish and preserve database confidentiality and integrity and availability. The next thing is there is a uniform data management and administration, which means there is concurrent access and recovery from crashes. Many users can access or even update the database at the same time without any interference. The next thing is data access and auditing. Now data auditing involves observing a data so as to be aware of the actions of database users. Usage of database will allow you to access and audit your data. Basically database administrators and consultants often set up auditing for security purposes. For example, to ensure that those without the permission to access information do not access it. Now there are types of databases used for storing data. First thing is centralized database. Basically centralized database is a type of database that stores data at a centralized database system. It comforts the users to access the stored data from different locations through several applications. Next, we have distributed database. Unlike a centralized database system, it is distributed all over the systems and data is distributed among different database systems of an organization. These database systems are connected via communication links. Next, we have relational database. This database is based on the relational data model with stores in the form of rows and columns and together forms a table. Further, we have cloud database, a type of database where data is stored in a virtual environment and executes over the cloud computing platforms is known as cloud database. Here are AWS. Microsoft Azure, among the few, comes into picture. Up next, we have object-based data model approach for storing data in the database systems. Next, we have hierarchical databases. 
It is the type of database that stores data in the form of parent-child relationship nodes. And then we have network database. It is the database that typically follows the network data model. Here the representation of data is in the form of nodes via links between them. Finally, we have NoSQL database. NoSQL database is a type of database that is used for storing a wide range of data sets. It is not a relational database as it stores data not only in a tabular form but in several different ways. It came into existence when the demand for building modern application increased. Therefore, NoSQL represents a wide variety of database technologies in response to the demands. With that, we shall move ahead and understand what is MongoDB. MongoDB is a document database with the scalability and flexibility that you want with the querying and indexing that you need. Put into definition, MongoDB is a document-oriented, NoSQL database used for high-volume data storage. It is an open-source document-oriented database that is designed to store a large scale of data. It is basically categorized under the NoSQL or not only SQL database because the storage and retrieval of data in MongoDB are not in the form of tables. Basically, MongoDB table is developed and managed by MongoDB itself. There is a corporation which develops MongoDB known as mongodb.inc. Now this is under SSPL or server side public license and initially it was released in the year 2009 of February. Now as I've mentioned, it does not involve any table or SQL. Rather, it involves a basin format. Since MongoDB uses no SQL, the format of storage is BSON, which is similar to JSON format. Now here I might also add that MongoDB is a document database with the scalability and flexibility that you want with querying and indexing that you always need. Now this is an official definition given by the creators. Basically MongoDB stores data in flexible JSON-like document meaning fields can vary from document to document and data structure can be changed over time. So basically, data model maps to the objects in your application code will make the data easy to work with. Ad hoc queries, indexing, and real-time aggregation provide powerful ways to access and analyze your data. I'm sure you might be wondering what these are. Here, we'll look at all of the features of MongoDB in our features section of today's video. With that, let's move on and understand why exactly do we need MongoDB. Now, here are the few reasons as to why we need to use MongoDB. The first one, MongoDB is basically built on a scale-out architecture that has become popular with developers of all kinds of developing scalable applications with evolving data schemas. Now the next thing is that MongoDB makes it easier for developers to store structured or unstructured data and it uses JSON-like format to store documents. Now this format directly maps to native objects in most modern programming languages, making it a natural choice for developers as they don't need to think about normalizing the data. Now MongoDB can also handle high volume and can scale both vertically or horizontally to accommodate large data loads. Basically MongoDB was built for people building internet and business application who need to evolve quickly and scale elegantly. Companies and development teams of all sizes use MongoDB for a wide range of reasons. Now these reasons, we'll go ahead and look at it. First reason being document model. Now document data model is a powerful way to store data and retrieve data in any modern programming language, allowing developers to move very fast. Next thing we have fully scalable. Basically, this means that MongoDB's horizontal and scale-out architecture can support huge number of both data and traffic. Next, it gets us started fast, which means MongoDB has a great user experience for developers who can install MongoDB and start writing code immediately. The next thing is deployment options. 
MongoDB is available in any major public cloud such as AWS, Azure, Google Cloud through MongoDB Atlas. In large data centers through the Enterprise Advanced Edition or free through Open Source Community Edition. Now finding community. Due to extreme development nature of MongoDB, MongoDB has developed a large and mature platform ecosystem. It has a wide range of community of developers and consultants. Now with these ample reasons given, I don't think you need any more justification as to why we need to start using or learning about MongoDB. I hope this session is getting interesting now. Hence, with that, let's look at the features of MongoDB. Now, as I've already mentioned, MongoDB is a scalable, flexible NoSQL database. It has high number of good features and most important features. The first one being ad hoc queries. Now ad hoc queries for optimized and real time analytics is a main and important feature of MongoDB. While designing the schema of database, it is impossible to know in advance all queries that will be performed by the end users. In this case, ad hoc query is a short lived command whose value depends on a variable. Each time an ad hoc query is executed, the result may be different depending on the variables in the question. MongoDB supports field queries, range queries, and regular expression searches. Queries can return specific fields and also account for user defined functions. This is made possible because MongoDB indexes BSON documents and uses MongoDB query language. The next thing is indexing. Indexing is used basically for better query executions. Now the number one issue that many technical support team fails to address with their users is indexing. If it is done right, indexes are intended to improve search speed and performance. A failure to properly define appropriate indexes can usually and will lead to a mirage of accessibility issue such as problems with query execution and even load balancing. MongoDB allows you to index and it can be created on demand to accommodate real time and ever changing query patterns and application requirements. They can also be declared on any field within any of your documents, including those nested within arrays. Next thing is replication. Replication is basically used for better data availability and scalability. When your data only resides in a single database, it is exposed to multiple potential points of failure, such as several crash, service interruptions, or even good old hardware failure. Basically in MongoDB, replica sets are employed for this purpose. Primary server or node accepts all write operations and applies those some operations across secondary servers replicating the data. And if the former primary node comes back online, it does so as a secondary server for the new primary node. The next thing is load balancing. Now at the end of the day, optimal load balancing remains one of the holy grails of large scale database management for growing enterprise applications. Now MongoDB supports large scale load balancing. The platform can handle multiple concurrent read and write requests for the same data with best in class concurrency control locking protocols that ensure data concurrency. Basically MongoDB ensures that each and every user has a consistent view and quality experience with the data they need to access. Sharding is one of the main things when dealing with particular large data sets. Sharding, the process of splitting larger data sets across multiple distributed collections or shards, helps the data distribute and better execute what might otherwise be problematic for the queries. Without sharding or scaling, a growing web application with millions of daily users is nearly impossible. All operations in sharding environment are handled through a lightweight process called Mongo's. Mongos can direct queries to correct shard based on the shard. Now here I've briefly gone across all the features of MongoDB. First one being ad hoc as discussed. The next is indexing and replication, load balancing and sharding. With that, let's move on and understand the applications of MongoDB. Now looking at the applications of MongoDB, 
The first one that we have is content management systems. Fundamental of MongoDB approaches and practices are introduced in content management use cases, which would be done using familiar, simple examples and problems. The method for modeling user comments on content like social media and blog spots are introduced by storing comments. A model is proposed for designing a website content management systems by metadata and asset management in MongoDB. The next application is product data management. Now basically for e-commerce website, product data management and solutions, one can use MongoDB to store information because it has flexible schema well suited for the job. One can also manage a product catalog and learn practices and methods for modeling from the product catalog document. Operational intelligence. Basically, MongoDB is beneficial for real-time analytics and operational intelligence use. Now, one can learn storing log data document to know about the approaches and several ways to store and model machine-generated data with MongoDB. Several other few applications of usage of MongoDB are balanced features, which means one can use MongoDB to get multiple balanced features. For example, that one wants to use some features like queuing, map, FTS, but don't require it a lot, which is easily possible through MongoDB. Consistency over availability. If one prefers consistency over availability, then he can get a specific version of consistency in MongoDB applications. Denormalizing the data. Re-denormalizing the data is tough to do and also very expensive. Also, you will not be able to change the shard keys when you are running MongoDB. If you want to use a blend of secondary indexes and key value looks up, then you can use MongoDB. But you cannot use it for too many secondary indexes because it will start scaling poorly. The next thing that we have is data on single server. One of the best features of MongoDB is that it was made intentionally suboptimal to enable sharding on a single server. Next advantage is ideal for querying. As discussed earlier, if the rate of querying is very strong to the database, then MongoDB is ideal. Ideal for documented oriented. MongoDB is the right choice only when there are few relations and one wants to scale it. Polyglot database system. MongoDB has an excellent capability to pick up the best part of all the databases, which makes it even more amazing to use as large scale systems that are not using only a single database. Finally, we have something called as mobility and scaling. MongoDB is very scalable and flexible, which gives fantastic database solutions to deal with different kinds of environments. With that, we jump into the final session of today's video, which is companies using MongoDB. Of course, this might interest you as some of the top-notch companies use MongoDB as their database. eBay being one of the multinational company that provides a platform for customer sales, it is currently running a large number of projects in MongoDB like merchandising categorization, cloud management, metadata storage, search suggestions, etc. MetLife is one of the leading companies that we have heard. It uses MongoDB to benefit programs, annuities, insurances, etc. There are more than 19 million customers in Middle East, Europe, Asia, Latin America, Japan, and even United States. MetLife is using MongoDB not only for that, but also for its advantage of customer service application called The Wall. Now, Shutterfly is one of the most popular online photo sharing and it uses MongoDB to manage and store more than 6 billion images, which has a transaction rate of up to 10,000 operations per second. Now, Shutterfly earlier used Oracle, but later transitioned into MongoDB. Aadhaar, India's unique identification project, which has the biggest biometrics database in the world, MongoDB is being used here for database. It uses to store massive amount of demographic and biometric data for more than 1.2 billion Indians. MongoDB is being used for storage of images in the Aadhaar project. EA is an online multiplayer game 
that is using MongoDB database for its game called FIFA Online. MongoDB can easily handle complicated things that need synchronization with each other entirely. With that, we come to the end of today's session. I hope learning about MongoDB interested you through this session. If you have any queries related to today's session, you can put down in the comment section below and we will answer it. Until we meet again next time, happy learning. I hope you have enjoyed listening to this video. Please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply them at the earliest. Do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to Edureka channel to learn more. Happy learning!